The title, Lux Internum, or Internal Light, comes from the idea of us having a light inside us uh, that no external forces can take away from us. It's a light that's inside you that uh, you yourself can't even take away because you didn't put it there. Hello. I was asked to say a few words about the new collection, Lux Internum. It means internal light. Composers that I was really influenced by growing up learning Led Zeppelin guitar at the same time I was learning piano um, were especially uh, Chopin with, um, with a, especially the Prelude 24 in D minor. That stormy piece really um, broke people out of the, the stereotype of Chopin being music you warm up to dance by, you know, the whole waltzes and all that stuff. Um, Chopin has a whole other deep and disturbed and really uh, epic kind of way of writing that is, is in some of the pieces people know, but, but they tend to be less known, like the Scherzo number no. 4 and the, and the ballads, the uh, Ballade 4, 3, um, and then the Prelude 24. He really turns uh, the piano into this rhythmic giant thing with the lead on top with the right hand and uh, it's just a, a huge, huge explosion of drama and that piece always hit me. 80 years later than that, than the Chopin, you have um, Debussy with his first book, Claude Debussy with his book one of Preludes, uh, What the West Wind Saw. That was a very influential piece to me because he was, I could see physically on the piano, visibly how he was putting together chords that made no harmonic sense, no theoretical sense, no common practice sense. But like Mazorsky, he was putting together chords that just looked good, they felt good on the piano, they lined up with your hands, and they could turn into these huge swirls of sound. So the Chopin Prelude 24 and the uh, WC What the West Wind Saw were very influential and, uh, in most of my piano music and I hope people uh, discover those pieces. Kind of a diversion from what most people think of as new music or what I think of as new music, um, which in my case is usually agitated or somewhat um, difficult to listen to or difficult to pay for. Usually the word difficulty is in there somewhere. but 
and lux internum, internal light. Um, I kind of broke my rule and in the year 2020, realized that I was gravitating towards listening, especially at night, to quieter music, calmer music. Eric Satie, poor Eric Satie, he's used by everybody who's having a nervous breakdown. I'm sure he hoped his music would be heard um, in other places than hospitals and, and the 10th floor, things like that. But um, I started to realize I was listening to quiet music and I wanted to write a set of preludes um, uh, that weren't like the first set of preludes that I wrote, which were mixed and very dynamic, but loud, short, soft, you know, all kinds of extremes. And try to put together a collection of 12 nocturnes. That would be more reflective of um, kind of a meditative thing, but not, not zoning out and into like a new age straight ahead vibe, but definitely going into the quieter section of anything that I've ever done. So these 12 pieces are, um, are made to just kind of listen to and maybe put yourself to sleep or put yourself in a certain zone. And um, most new music composers kind of avoid this kind of thing because it gets very precariously on the edge of like new age and functional music, which is used for meditation. And this piece is really just supposed to reflect different shades and different layers of, of different um, dynamics of music. And I was lucky enough to, uh, to work with uh, a great pianist from Chicago, who uh, Russian-born pianist Svetlana Belsky. And I first discovered her work when I bought her uh, Busoni CD. Frutro Busoni is a really interesting uh, and quirky uh, link between the 19th and 20th centuries. And he has one foot in the 19th and one foot in the 20th century, directly continuing Litz's tradition into the 20th century. And, and his pieces were really interesting to me. So uh, Svetlana did them, um, these nocturnes and these elegies so, so sensitively, and she had all these different layers that it reminded me of, of my favorite pianist um, in any recording, who is um, Svetoslav Richter. And um, what Richter was able to do with Chopin is like pull out middle voices and pull out voices where if you look at the music, you don't even know where he's taking that melody from, but he found it inside there. Several of these pieces were presented to Svetlana in a, in a similar way where um, there's a lot of activity, sometimes quiet activity, but I asked her to kind of find the middle voice and bring out the mil middle melody that's kind of buried in the layers of the left and right hand.
pieces, you might have three dynamics going on with the two hands. You might have a mezzo forte, medium loud in the middle, and then a, a mezzo piano, and then a pianissimo on top. And those kind of layers um, were explored in Luke Centurnum, and Svetlana was a great pianist to work with because she immediately caught on to these different layers of activity. When my dad used to listen to quieter music in the car when he was older, I was listening to Led Zeppelin and everything loud I could get my hands on as a teenager. And I really criticized, you know, my old man, like, you know, always listening to quiet music. And then music turned into easy listening where all of a sudden the quieter Crosby, Stills and Nash songs of my generation were on the radio. And um, I started to wonder why, you know, people started to listen to quiet music when they're in the car. and. I gradually realized in my 50s that what they were doing is they realized life was a permanent shitstorm and quiet music was your chance in the car especially to calm your heart rate down and calm your anger down about things going on around you. So I started to realize the idea of functional music and why somebody might want to listen to a whole bunch of quiet songs. And that's another reason that I put together uh, Internal Light is to have these quiet songs just kind of play themselves out. It's called Luke's Interna, and it's 12 pieces for piano, plus rare works from 100 years ago from Paderewski, the Polish composer, and 100 years before that, Maria Szymanowska, a very little-known female Polish composer who was around 1820 before Chopin. I hope you like the collection, and if there are any questions, I'll uh, put up a toll-free number soon.